everyone. Let's talk about burnout. Um, you know, nurse burnout is definitely a huge topic these days. And I am a huge mental uh, wellness advocate. I'm Britt. I've been a nurse for 10 years. Uh, I did a couple specialties, hospice palliative, progressive. Um, I traveled in the pediatric ICU and the pediatric CV ICU. Uh, I did a stint in COVID ICU as well. Um, and that's really where uh, burnout really, nurse burnout really exacerbated me. Um, you know, I was experiencing uh, mental fatigue, uh, body fatigue, um, as well as depression. Um, I was crying a lot, um, I had a lot of anxiety when I'd have to like go onto the unit um, and things like that. And then the hugest and the most scary one for me was brain fog. Um, you know, just doing simple tasks, I just couldn't remember them or it just wasn't coming to me as quickly. And you know, as an ICU nurse, we have to be on the ball, we have to be quick. Um, so I just started to get really scared uh, with my nurse burnout symptoms. Um, and so what I did to help uh, those are I created a morning routine uh, where I introduced mindfulness and meditation into my life. Um, and it just helped calm and center me before I would go into the ICU. You know, we're having a lot of things beeping at us, people calling us, um, you know, uh, people in and out, things like that. Um, so having that time for me to just focus and center myself before I went in and took care of my patients was super helpful. Gratitude, uh, gratitude journaling is one of my favorite things. Um, honestly, just being thankful that, you know, I, I'm living, I'm breathing. I get to, you know, walk in and out of this hospital. Um, that really helped me, um, as well as therapy. Honestly, um, I was going through a, definitely a, a depression battle during COVID and I couldn't really see a way out. Um, so, I found my therapist and we worked through a lot of coping mechanisms and a lot of coping skills. And one of the things she would always say is like, did you do your best? And that's all you can do, you know? So um, just little simple tools uh, and tricks of the trade to really help me uh, work through my burnout and my mental fatigue symptoms. If I were to suggest anything to someone um, experiencing any uh, burnout symptoms, I would say definitely therapy, um, getting that morning routine, whatever you wanna put into it, you know, whether it's working out or eating healthy, um, whatever works for you but also community. I think that for me, my friends, my family, um, really were strongholds during that time, you know? Being honest with them, like, I'm not doing well. Uh, to make sure that they're checking on you, to make sure that, you know, you have a support system that's backing you during the difficult times. They won't last forever, um, but, you know, you do need that solid support system to help you through the, through the times with anything. And then a little extra bonus tip. Um, I personally think that you cannot pour from an empty cup. So self-care, whatever self-care looks like to you, um, but making sure that you're taking care of yourself. I learned the hard way that um, being a nurse to myself is the most important job that I'll ever have. Um, and you only get one life, you only get one body. Um, so taking care of it, taking your care of your mental um, and things like that, and you'll be fine. You'll get through it and we are wishing you all the best in it because you know i'm not the guru of everything i wanted to ask my friends what they experienced did they experience it and how they helped and how they coped uh with relieving some of their symptoms of burnout so let's hear from them hello everyone we are here with jj hello all right tell us about yourself jj uh my name is jj i am an er travel nurse and content creator love that well thank you for creating content with me <laughs> oh the pleasure is mine, Britt. Thank you for having me here today. We are here with Sheila. Sheila, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. My name is Sheila. I'm a picky travel nurse. I'm originally from New York, currently in the Bay Area right now, and just loving life. Oh. Hi, my name is Georgina Villarreal, a.k.a. Nurse Georgie. I am a med surge tele-oncology nurse. I've been a nurse for six years, and I also do travel nursing. Absolutely, yes. I think I'm currently burnt out right now. I would say so, yeah. Um, actually, honestly, very early on in my career, um, I was like a new grad working adult med surgeon in New York City, so you can imagine. A hundred percent have experienced nurse bur burnout. I think I experienced it only after a year in nursing. The dread going into work, like working up to go to work, I don't think it should have felt that way. Then when I got to work, 
I just didn't want to be there. And it's just not good for anyone. It's not good for me. It's not good for my patients. It's not good for the people who hired me on and trusted me with patients' lives. It's not good for any of that. Um, and I just felt a sense of like, get me out of here. And there was nothing wrong with the job in it of itself. It was just, I needed out of there. Um, it was very difficult. I think just the conditions, the working conditions, you know, um, the anxiety, the lack of sleep and all that stuff, um, it, it starts to get to you very early on. So you kind of just try to find ways to get around it or kind of combat it. After the COVID pandemic, I actually had gained like 30 pounds. I had stopped working out. I had really poor eating habits. I was chugging energy drinks and my confidence and energy went so low. I felt almost, I'm not a depressed person, but I just felt like I I was exhausted. Like I had no energy to give to everyone else. And I think that's the biggest thing that I've seen amongst the nursing community is that we we're givers, right? So we're giving so much to everyone else and we forget to take care of ourselves. And so I just wasn't taking care of myself. And so I had low energy. I had low confidence. I had, I was very fatigued. And so that's when I had to come back into the body and just start working on my fitness, working on my health, my mind, body, and soul. Um, to get recentered, I started meditating uh daily uh, we've gone to running recently started running every day and it's like one of those things that if you won't really realize it until you're in it that physical activity really helps your mental space and i feel like the happiest i've ever been is when i've been exercising consistently a few things that i do and started to kind of add on in my daily routine i journal every day in the morning um i um, I practice gratitude. It's honestly the single most thing that's like changed my life. Um, I just started doing it in the fall. And just that si simple adding that onto your routine every morning and just starting your day off with gratitude and just positivity, it changes the energy of your entire day. Um, so that's one. And then the other thing was really trying to be consistent in a workout routine. Um, I try to work out at least two to three times a week. I'll go to hit classes or um, indoor cycling and things like that just to get my body moving. I used to feel like working night shifts. I used to feel like I'm going into five years working night shifts, so imagine. Intense. Um, yeah, and I always do my shifts in a row. So it's like I, fe I always felt like a walking zombie and I'm just like on autopilot and just adding the couple little workouts every day or a few times a week has changed like how I feel like I feel less sluggish um I feel like I have more energy it gives me motivation to wake up earlier um, um and personally I like to do my workouts in the morning um so either um I would go after work um and just get it out the way and I feel so good and energized and I sleep so much better and yeah, I think that those are the main things that I've done really, like main changes that I've done and it's helped me quite a bit. I hired my first fitness and nutrition coach. And so fitness and nutrition have been the game changer in my mental health and my well-being. Um, just introducing different superfoods in my body and waking up every morning and just doing some kind of movement. So when I'm in a funk, the first thing I go to is uh, working out and just moving my body. I didn't understand how important nutrition was and just like the food that we put in our body. I was waking up uh, putting sugar in my coffee and the first thing I was putting in my body is, is glucose and I'm getting this insulin spike and it's making me tired. So one of the few things that I changed was like having lemon water. Uh, that's the first thing I have when I wake up and then having, you know, black coffee and not putting sugar in and maybe putting almond milk or something else. Another thing I did um, that I don't think gets talked about enough is I recently quit alcohol and I feel like that's put my mental space in this whole new light that I, I want to share with everybody. I just don't talk about it. Enough. No. Well, let's talk about it here. Oh, sure. Uh, How has, has becoming sober helped you mentally? Um, I, there'd be... It just kind of helped shape my identity and I had to ask my question, questions about who I am and where I want my life to go whereas before even one or two drink clouds my judgment for one night I'll lose a day hangovers get worse as you get older but now that I don't have hangovers and I'm not pressured to kind of numb my emotions or whatever's going on I'm forced to kind of have dialogue with myself and kind of establish more self-awareness and self-knowledge of my values, who I am as a person, and my identity at large.
Wow, that was major, and I loved it, and I, that's just so good. I, I don't even know how to top that. Like, <laughs> wow, like, where do we go with that, you know? It's just so amazing and juicy. I don't think that, you know, these topics are talked about enough, right. and that we do enough to really showcase the work that we're doing internally. So yes. proud of you for doing that work. Thank you, it's Britt. Hard, but be gentle with yourself. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Definitely, it has to start with one taking a step back from wherever you are and trying to be emotionally aware i think all self-help books all self uh self personal development books i think comes back to emotional awareness and emotional intelligence you have to know what you're feeling and when you're feeling it and be honest with yourself but really giving yourself that space whether it's journaling meditation whatever it may be, giving your space to feel those feelings and acknowledge those feelings. I think that's really where it starts because some of us have these feelings of discomfort and we kind of just ignore it, push it to the side, suppress it. And I think that's really unhealthy. So really emotional awareness. Find that one thing that you enjoy. And so for me, I'm a soccer player. Um, so that was picking up a soccer ball again, going back to my child, um, the child in me, right? Uh, whether you were a past gymnast or you were a past athlete, or maybe you don't like exercise, but like breath work or mindfulness um, is something that you're into. So find that one thing that you love and make sure you do it every day. Consistency is key. And that's how you get better at everything you practice. And so like today uh, at MedVenture Camp, we did uh, Reiki and sound bath. And that was something totally new for me. And I'm like, I can do this. I want to try more of it. And so just keep introducing your yourself to different mindfulness techniques um like breath work too breath work is like amazing and it's something that we don't have to pay for you can do it yourself for like three minutes a day um and that's also been something that i've been practicing as well oh perfect well we appreciate you so much for coming out and talking to us um i hope you enjoy your rest of your camp thank you so much i'm so happy you're here i'm so happy we're talking about this this is important stuff